Hi, my name is Liz and I'm a peer advisor for the College of Biological Sciences. Today I'm going to be talking about AP and IV credit. Probably the most frequent question I get asked by students is, hey, I took this AP exam in high school and I want to know how it transfers to my degree or what it counts towards. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to break down the basics of AP credits and IB credits. I'm going to discuss and explain how they count towards your degree and the restrictions that go along with them. I'm going to start off by explaining AP credits. So you receive credit for exams that you score three, fours, or fives in. These exams are comparable to lower division courses and these college credits that you're earning will count towards the minimum 180 units that you need in order to receive your bachelor's degree. So if you find yourself lacking units further down the road, these AP exams can help. All right, now for IB credit. Exams with official scores five, six, or sevens will receive eight quarter units of college credit. Like AP exams, these are comparable to some lower division courses. Students completing and submitting the IB diploma with a score of 30 or better will receive a maximum of 30 quarter units. And again, like AP credits, these will count towards your 180 units for graduation. Okay, so now that we know the basics, we're going to go ahead and tackle the AP charts and IB charts. These are offered by UC Davis and they're a, basically a layout of the exams and the units they correlate to, the courses they correlate to, and a bunch of good information to see whether your exams give you credit for certain classes or how much credit you receive from them. So the URL to get to the AP charts is www.ucdavis.edu slash admissions slash undergraduate slash apply slash advanced placement exams. So once you type that URL in, you're going to have a page that looks like this. This page gives you basically the information that I summarized in the beginning of this video. And if you scroll down, you're going to find the link to go to the chart. Go ahead and click that link and the chart should pop up. All seven pages of it, all the different exams listed, and all the information you need to know. Um, about those exams and the credits that are associated with them. This chart can also be downloaded onto your laptop. All right, so let's go ahead and break down this chart. On the far left, we have the examinations. So this is a list of all the exam titles in alphabetical order. Right next to that, you have your scores. So these are the score values that the university accepts. So next to the scores, we have the number of credits that you get for each exam. All right, so the number of units you receive will vary from exam to exam, but usually you will either receive eight units of credits or four units of credits, and these are the credits that will be applied towards the 180 unit graduation requirement. So next to the scores, we have the UC transfer admission eligibility area. This basically tells you what subject area the exams correlate to. So like social sciences, English, humanities, math, etc. Moving on, we have the I get see area. This is, just tells you whether an AP exam satisfies a course requirement on the I get see. Next, we have the UC Davis course equivalencies. This is going to tell you what courses at UC Davis correlate to what exam you took and the score you received. In the next column, we have duplicate credit allowance. This basically tells you whether you can take the course equivalent again for credit. So next, we have continuing UC Davis courses and as well as the college area requirements. So all these letters listed here correlate to a specific requirement. Um, and on the bottom of this document, it'll have it listed. And finally, we have comments at the very end. Okay, so now I'm going to go over a little bit of an example. So suppose student A took these following exams. 
calculus, English Lang, United States history, and these are their scores they received. All right, so looking back at our AP chart, we know that the student took the calculus AB exam. They received a score of four, and that means that they will receive four units of credit towards their degree. Mathematic courses that are equivalent to is 12, 16A, 17A, or 21A. There is duplicate credit allowance for 16A, 17A, 21A, but not Mathematics 12. Okay, so now we're going to look at the English Lang exam. The student received a score of 5. So what does that mean? They received the 8 units towards their degree, as well as it being equivalent to UWP 1. And there is no credit allowance for this course. All right, so now for U.S. history. Unfortunately, this student got a 2. So like I stated in the beginning, scores of 3, 4, and 5s are accepted for UCs. So the student wouldn't get any credit for that exam. Okay, moving on from AP charts, we're going to talk about IB charts. This is a link where you can find more information about IB charts, like the AP page. It looks like this. You can go scroll down, and here is the link for the IB chart. You can go ahead and click on it. So like the AP chart, the IB chart has very similar categories on top. You have your examination titles. You have your IB area, as well as your score, the overall credits that you would get for the exam. You also have your IGETC area, the course equivalency area, the duplicate credit allowance, as well as the college area requirements and the comments at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to go over an IB credit example. So suppose a student took the following exams, biology, chemistry, and Spanish A1. They scored a 6, 5, and a 7. So looking at back at our IB chart, we're going to go ahead and look for biology, which is right here. Zoom in a little. And for a score of 6, you're going to receive 8 units, and it's going to be equivalent to biological sciences 10, and there is no duplicate credit allowed. Okay, so for chemistry, the student scored a 5, so they'll get 8 units towards their degree. It's equivalent to chemistry 10, and there is no duplicate credit allowed, but notice how chemistry is split up, so if you received a 7, it'd be equivalent to chemistry 2A. Okay, so now for Spanish A1, the student received a score of 7, so that means they'll be receiving 8 units towards their degree, and this will be equivalent to Spanish 28, and there is no dual credit allowed. Also, keep in mind when it comes to IB scores, UC Davis only accepts higher level scores and not standard level. All right, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about AP and IB credits.